This is uh, lesson six and here we're looking at making scientific decisions and, and in particular we are using a decision tree model. So we're spending a little bit of time on this. So what, what we call this, this is called quantitative data. And so we use this quantitative data, this quantitative technique to decide whether or not we go ahead with a particular decision. Okay, so what we have here is we have a square. That is where you make the decision. And in this case, it's whether or not you develop a new product or whether or not you move overseas on here and the cost of that is one million launch overseas develop new product or do nothing at all okay so we're faced with three choices now if you launch overseas the cost is going to be one million pounds if you develop new products it's going to be four million if you do nothing it's not going to cost you a thing at all okay and then someone has has has, has worked out that if you move overseas you could be making six million pounds per year, okay? If uh, on a medium sales, you've been making 1.6 million, and on poor sales, on low sales, you're gonna make 0.5 million. The other one is where you decide to develop a new product. Now here, there's a 0.6 chance that you could in fact make 12 million pounds. So as I said, this is a square here, and at this point here, this is where you make your decision. So this is a, a sort of a circular node here, and here this is called expected value. Now what we then do is we multiply all of these out. So we go 6 million times 0.4 is equal to 2.4 million, 4 million times 0.4 is equal to 1.6 million, 0.5 million times 0.2 is equal to 0.1 million. You add all those up together, they come to 4.1 million. You get a pro profit of 3.1, which will get 4.1 million, and we take off the 1 million pounds here, 3.1 million. Okay, the same again, expected value here, 12 million times 0.6 is 7.2 million, 6 million times 0.3 million is 1.8 million, and 1 million times 0.1 is 0.1 million. We add them all up together, then we take away the 4 million pounds and 5.1. So therefore, according to this model, right, because do nothing will get you zero pounds. If you develop new product, on average, you're gonna get 5.1 million, and here you'd only make 3.1. So the choice that you would definitely go for is you would in fact develop a new product. So this is using a decision tree to help you to make a decision. Now clearly there are weaknesses with that because you could only make, there's a 10% chance that you may only make one million pounds. So therefore you may decide, and you may decide this is gonna be the least risky option because if you only make one million pounds, and you spent four million, then clearly you're gonna lose three million quid. On this one on here, however, you're only gonna lose half a million pounds, uh, but there's a 20% chance that you could lose half a million pounds. So it's a little bit more complicated than that. Here, the overall losses are clearly much bigger. Thank you. Okay, so this is, uh, we're now looking, we're just in decision trees, we're now looking at, at scientific decision making or hunches. Now, when you have a decision tree, it is a scientific decision, it's a scientific technique. If you use loads and loads of research, that is a scientific idea. Now, when we look at Tesco's or when we look at Virgin, they do do loads and loads of research on exactly what the customers want and then, they, and then that helps to formulate their idea. So initially they may have a hunch, but then it's based upon lots and lots of research from there. So clearly uh, there are limitations of a decision tree, you know, where the numbers come from, who assigns the probabilities, uh, also the environment will change. So, but the reason why we use scientific decision making is that it reduces risk and uncertainty because every time you make a decision it's always based upon risk and reward this is an absolutely fundamental part of business studies and there's also an opportunity cost in, involved in any decision the value of the next best alternative foregone so really whenever you make any decision there are a whole load of factors that need to be taken into account uh, have you got enough resources the stakeholders what's happening in the external environment what are the competitors up to the ethical considerations the mission what is your mission what is the whole purpose of the firm the quantitative data and also the qualitative data from there so a decision tree is just one technique that we use to help us when we come to formulate a plan for the future okay thank you